you might think you know everything there is to know about a Linux flat pack, and maybe you do. I don't know. But I've seen a lot of people out there that have this seemingly minor misunderstanding that leads to a crucial misinterpretation of what a flat pack is trying to achieve. So from my recent OBS 28 and 29 issue video, I found this comment. Amazing. We built Flatpak to deal with dependency issues so that applications don't need to deal with it, and everything just works out of the box for the end user. And yet, a dependency issue is still happening, breaking the app everywhere and requiring manual user intervention. And a surprisingly significant number of people actually like this comment. And even if you haven't seen this comment, you've probably seen a similar rhetoric elsewhere out on the internet. And I don't have an exact reason for why this misunderstanding exists, but I do have a fairly compelling theory. So it's pretty often you'll see flat packs, app images, and snaps being directly compared with each other because in the end, they are trying to achieve a fairly similar goal distro independent packaging. So you can take a flat pack from Ubuntu, run it on Arch Linux, and it works exactly the same. And the same is true for app images and mostly for snaps as well. But for the sake of this video, snaps don't really matter. But this might seem really obvious in hindsight, but these three solutions are not trying to achieve it in the same way. Let's take a real application example. Let's say you want to install Critter. If you install this with a native package manager, let's say Pac-Man, App, DNF, doesn't really matter. When you try to install it, a bunch of dependencies are going to be pulled down alongside the application. And some of those dependencies you might already have installed on your system. But then there's app images. App images are just a single file, but obviously you still need those dependencies to get the application to run. So with an app image, all of those dependencies are bundled into that one file, and you can take this one file basically anywhere that has a suitable app image environment. Now a flat pack does not work like this. So, if you check the flat packs you have installed, you're going to notice a bunch of things that you didn't explicitly install. Things like the KDE application platform, the GNOME application platform, the free desktop platform, this Mesa package, Mesa Extra, and depending on what you're using, there might be a bunch of extras as well. These are dependency packages. Flat packs do not have everything bundled into a single file. Now, the dependencies that I have are specifically just for FlatHub and things that try to interact with FlatHub. If you look at something like the Fedora Flatpak repo, it is going to have a different dependency package, but it is still going to have one of those packages. So let's just continue with the Critter example. Critter is a Qt application. So to get Qt support inside of a flat pack, this is done through the KDE application platform. So when you install the Critter flat pack, if you don't already have the application platform installed, it is going to be installed alongside Critter. One of the nice things about flat pack though, is you can have these different versions of that platform, of that runtime. So in this case, I actually have three different versions of it. Now, this is the important part. While being very different from the way that an app image works, a flat pack is still built to deal with application dependency issues, just not in the way this commenter understands it. So let's go with the example of OBS 29. This was breaking because of an issue in the KDE application platform. This was breaking because of an issue in the free desktop platform. So the GNOME and the KDE platforms are built off of the free desktop platform just to add some extra things for their specific environments. But unlike an issue on Arch Linux, on Ubuntu, on Fedora, on Gentoo, on Mint, on Manjaro, on all of these other distros out there where they might have different versions of the dependencies, different build options, maybe they apply different patches, maybe they even run different forks of the application, 
in the case of this flat pack dependency issue, you don't have to worry about all of those variables. In this case, the problem is consistent regardless of where it's being run. If you're running the flat pack and you're running OBS 29, it was going to have the exact same issue. And you might be saying, well, isn't this much worse then because it's affecting way more users? Well, the thing is that nothing is a silver bullet. There's always going to be trade-offs. At the cost of affecting every single user when a problem occurs, you get the benefit of affecting every single user when a fix occurs. So you don't have to worry about Ubuntu being six months or two years behind in the case of an LTS. You don't have to worry about Gen 2 being too far ahead and leading to new problems. Everyone is on the exact same playing field, regardless of what you are running on your regular distro. I like to think of Flatpak sort of as a, as a self-contained distro. It doesn't matter what regular distro you're running, basically as a Flatpak bootloader, the Flatpak dependencies remain exactly consistent. Mostly. Assuming you don't have, you know, issues with the Flatpak environment caused by your specific distro. In the case where the Flatpak environment is working like it should, it's going to be the same regardless of where you run it. And I'm not saying that this is a good or a bad thing. It just is what it is. It's up to you to decide whether that trade-off is going to be worth it for the way that you want to be using your system. Maybe you prefer what Ubuntu LTS does, where everything just stays the same. Maybe you get some security patches, but everything just stays pretty much the same until the next version of the LTS. Maybe you like what Arch Linux is doing, where you like sort of basically being a beta tester for the rest of Linux and constantly getting updates rolling in. For the way that I use Flatpaks, I typically only use them when they are the developer-supported way of installation. Say with like the 14 launcher with OBS, if I was using bottles, I would be using the flat pack there because this is what the devs say that they are testing. This is the one they are actively supporting and using anything outside of that, you're basically on your own. You can try to report issues, but a lot of the time that's going to fall on deaf ears. And that might seem kind of weird, kind of harsh, but from a developer's perspective, supporting something like a flat pack, like an app image, like a snap offers a massive time optimization because now you don't have to build your application in sort of this weird distro agnostic way. You don't want to make use of any features that are too new because then the dependencies available on like a Ubuntu LTS are going to have problem working with the application. You don't want to use any features too old because a distro like Arch Linux, like Gen2 may have already deprecated or even removed those features from the dependencies. You want to use this weird like middle ground where you're probably safe but even so, there might still be issues here and there. When you can just ignore what is available on the distro and instead focus on this outside environment where you know exactly what is going to be available, it makes it much, much easier to build an application, to support an application. If someone reports a bug, you know exactly what they are running if they are running it in the Flatpak, for example. There's no question about what distro or anything else like that. It is much easier to track down what is actually going on there. And when you're doing stuff as an open source dev, you're generally doing stuff for free or maybe very minimal donations. So you don't exactly want to be spending issues on all of this bug reporting, all of these other things. You want to limit the scope of what really matters to the project so you can focus on things that actually matter, like improving the project. So yes, flat packs are made to deal with dependency issues, but they're made to deal with dependency variants, not the concept of a dependency issue full stop. So I hope you learned something today, and if you did, be sure to go and like the video down below, leave your comment, all that fun stuff, let me know your thoughts, and I don't know, if you like flat packs or you just think they're bloat. So if you like this video and you really want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stelly Barrow Pay, linked down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's going to be it for me, and...
I'm out.